Um. Well, hello. And and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, this is Ankan Bashu, and this is again uh, a tutorial for myself. And in this lesson, I'm just going to talk about some of the grid <coughs> grid files and how you can use the grid files to make isopack maps. And I use the Carlson 3D software, and I have AutoCAD installed. And I use both of these programs to create my maps and everything. So, and it's not going to be really like a scientific presentation. It will be more like what you should use and what we should not, and what you can really do really quickly with some of the grids, and 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 just just show you the output of some of the grids that I have already created. And it will it will give you some basic understanding of how to use some basic data, how to create the grid files, and how to use isopack maps that looks really good, which will make your boss happy or your client really happy. <coughs> okay. Now my intended audience is like if you're a student with almost no exposure to three dimensional geologic modeling, you can listen to this presentation. Or if you are an entry level geologist and you are just starting up with 3D modeling, you are welcome to listen to this presentation too. But if you are like an advanced level person, this tutorial is not for you. I would recommend that you stop and look for something more interesting. Okay, as I said before, I used the Carlson 2011 software with AutoCAD, and Carlson it's particularly very very popular in the US and and almost all the companies in the Appalachian coal fields they use the Carlson software for mining and coal mine reserve reserve updates surface mining all kinds of stuff <coughs> and for this tutorial I'm not going to use extensive database I'm just using Excel to create um, an imaginary database for this for the tutorial so you just need Excel you can do it in, in, on any text editor actually okay now for this tutorial I'm going to assume that my projector is only 500 bit by 500 bit and I'm just going to going to make up some points and this is the database that I'm going to use and these are just some numbers that that I created and it's just made up number and I deal with coal all the time so your Z values are the thicknesses of the coal seam, say in feet, and X and X and Y values are in there, and here like at 20 and 480, at that point you have five feet thickness coal seam, and then again at 2400 your thickness of the coal seam is 4.5, and I'll I'll upload this Excel file somewhere so that you can use it to to generate the same grid files that I have created and test uh, test the software the way I have I'm gonna do <coughs> okay now in this program the call sign let's go to call sign I may have it open already uh, yeah I have it open and this is call sign and this database I just created, I created just just uh, some points. It's not a complete drill hole record. I have point information like at that particular point at 2480, that point uh, my cool some thickness is 5 feet. At the point 2020, my thickness of the coal is 1 feet. Stuff like that. So if you go to your Carlson, by the way, this is the Carlson window, and you can see this is Carlson Mining 2011 with AutoCAD. And you can go to points, and if you go to points, you can import text or ASCII file. If you click on that, it will ask you to select your ASCII file, and you can select it. And I've already created that database that I have. Uh, let me see. right here example database that's my example database and you can see it's that XYZ file 
and I have all that information x y and the thickness of the cold seam and I just hit open and just hit okay and you will say ready open point here we go well I already had something else in here but I mean that's the way you import the files but this I'll teach you how to do that in another lesson let's just focus on our presentation so when you import the database <coughs> now so you have your AutoCAD where you have already imported the database now you can do all kinds of stuff with it now to do any isopeg mapping you have to create a 3d grid file with your data so that you can use the grid file to isopeg your cold sign now in, in Carlson there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six different methods that you can use to do your do your grading. And most of the time what I tend to use is your linear least square method, inverse distance method, and and the triangulation method. And there are a whole bunch of different options that you can you can set up how you how you wanna your grade. Most of the time, I see, I use a dimension of the scale. If, if it's a small area, I use 10 by 10. If it's a big area, I use 100 by 100. Sometimes 200 by 200 grid size. Grid size. But let's let's start with the triangulation and see how how our isopack looks like. Now, the triangulation method it it triangulate between the drill hole data. So it interpolates the value between your drill hole. So if you choose your your grid size, which is outside your last data point, the grid is not actually going to extend beyond your last data point. So when you isopack, you see these lines. They don't extend outside your outside the last data point. This they all stop here. Follow my cursor. They all stop at the last data point. So if you had a grid inside, yeah, you have some value inside everywhere. But but in this tutorial, I'm using this big black boundary as my, my, my grid size. So when I did my triangulation, it did not, the first thing that I noticed that it did not extend to my grid boundary. And the other thing to note is your isolines, they're honoring the data point like this is your, your five feet thickness isolines it's going through your five feet data point here you have a two feet isoline it's going through the two feet data point but another five feet isoline going through the five feet data point but the problem with this because we don't have enough data your isolines they look kind of jaggedy so they don't look very geologic so if you do this and present it to your boss he would probably laugh and tell you no you gotta do it by hand make it look more geologic so you can use it when you have very dense data set and don't use it if you have very scarce data little bit of data okay now next let's go to the next type which is the polynomial method I'm talking about polynomial the next because polynomial is also based of triangulation okay and if you create the grid and if you look at the isopack lines you see they look very similar to the triangulation method the good thing again they honor the data point so the 5 feet isoline is going through the 5 feet data point but the isolines the jaggedy so if you don't have a lot of data you don't want to use it like I would use the triangulation or the polynomial method if I have a, a digital topography where I know that I have thousands and thousands of data then yes I can use the triangulation method and then create my grid file and create my isopack they will they will look very similar to the topography but with kind of data I have here it's probably not the best method to use it's it's mathematically right but geologically it's not that great okay now the next method I'm going to talk about is the linear least squares 
and this is one of my most favorite grading method because it outputs a very nice and smooth contour lines and it also honors my data and you can actually try to figure out a trend within your data very well like most of the geologists when you when you're isopacking by hand you are actually looking for some trend where is the thick cold seam where it's thinning down so and you can do a bunch of different things you can you can use a lower inverse distance factor to see the global trend you can increase your inverse distance factor to look for a local trend now let's see the contour lines now see here the lines are a lot smoother they look way better and the iso lines is they're also honoring my data point like the five feet iso line is going through my five feet data point here's another five feet iso line going through my five feet data point the two feet iso line is going through my two feet thickness data point so it's use it as as much as you can and it, uh, any kind of data pretty much you can use this method and you should get a reasonably good and nice presentable ISO lines it's one of my most favorite gridding method in Carlson <coughs> well and with this gridding method instead of creating the ISO lines you can also hatch all those different zones and you can color them up and do a whole bunch of different things they're particularly interesting and in useful sometimes to get your area really quickly and do your your tonnage calculations now there are other methods inverse distance uh, they don't really carry, carry the trends very well it looks kind of good and smooth but the bad part with this they don't really honor all the data points they, they mathematically they are still still right but when you were doing geology and you were creating iso lines which does not honor your data point it looked kind of <laughs> uh, not right so i would i would say i would recommend that you stay away from this method unless you have a very dense database very dense data and you are using a very smaller grid size now there are two other methods rigging method and the a boss method that I'm not going to talk about except try to avoid as much as you can I mean they're probably very good at what they do but to me they're like too complicated and in most practical purposes we we can live even without them you can you can do most of your stuff using uh, using the linear least squares the triangulation method and sometimes your inverse distance method so if you want to learn more about the ABUS and the Kriging method you can go to Carlson help files and read up but I'm just gonna say one more thing on about the about the Kriging and the ABUS that even the Kriging don't honor the data point and the ABUS method that also did not honor my data point like the five feet iso lines is not going through my five feet data point well for reference you can go to coldgeology.com and that's the place where i would i'm going to put this uh, my excel file that you can use to do the same exercise and and recreate all the maps that i have just shown you and 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 just by doing it you will learn more and, and you will figure out how to do it yourself and I'll try to have another another lesson where I will just go through the Carlson uh, software import the data and create these different grades and from the different grades create these ISO lines well thanks for listening and if you have any questions just don't hesitate to contact me thank you bye bye